Hey, welcome to uh, the part of this series where we show how to write an image file, particularly for the Raspberry Pi, using Rufus. Now, I have to say that Rufus is my preferred way to write image files. It's what I usually use when I do pretty much any of my images, either Windows, Linux, Raspberry Pi, whatever I'm writing. So this, not to bias you to think that it's better than any of the others, but this is my preference. Uh, if you're watching this video coming from another one of my videos that uh, is showing you an operating system, particularly for the Raspberry Pi, then <clears throat> it might be worth checking out all of the ways you can write these image files if you're curious, because they're all unique in their own way. They all have their own advantages and disadvantages. And whichever one suits your purpose is better or suits your operating system better. So they all have merit in their own way. So here's the website where you download Rufus, which <coughs> actually I decided to show mostly so that you could identify that you were on the correct site to download the application. I'll put a link to, the to this in the description below. But as I'm writing this, they're on version 3.4, and they have a 3.4 portable. And I usually use the portable version because that way there's no installer. I can put it on a flash drive. And since we're writing to SD cards, I can write from uh, Rufus on an SD card or on a flash drive, take the image off my hard drive and write it to an SD card. Or if I have a big enough flash drive, I can do everything from the flash drive. Anyway. There are a lot of considerations for using Rufus for other things uh, that you might want to know. So there's versions that do ISO support, versions for DOS support, how to write Windows images, and whatnot. And then they have archived versions down at the bottom. So let's get into the actual program that you want to see. So here's our shortcut for Rufus. Here's our image that we're writing for our test or demonstration, which is the 11.13.2018 Raspbian Stretch Full, which is a desktop operating system for the Raspberry Pi, in case you didn't know, somehow got here any other way. And it is the biggest one, most complete, but also the largest file. I figured that would make the most interesting test. Now, here is the the window. Blah, here's the window for Rufus. And unlike Win32 Disk Imager, it does give us some information on our device. So you can pick the devices you want to write to and it has selected my no label E drive 32 gig micro SD card. And then we're going to select our image. I don't know if we could drop it on there or not. We can. And that's another benefit because with Win32 disk imager, I could not drop the image on it. I had to actually go select it. So you can drag your images on here and it will put them on there. And then it selects common partition information and how you want to do it. And it's pretty intuitive as to what's going on. If you try to write, say, the downloadable Windows 10 installer ISO, it will give you some more information on what you can do to make that happen, but that's beyond the scope of this video. We're just writing Raspberry Pi image files at this one. So then we se select start, and it gives us a nice warning saying this is going to destroy everything on your drive, and it also tells us that the image it's using down here, so we can verify. Before we click start, let's double check that we're not overwriting one of our external hard drives, which I don't have any on my laptop, but if you do have a, other drives other than your C drive that it might recognize incorrectly, it bears checking that one final time before you click start. Because once we click this, and this message comes up, there is no going back. And then it writes it. And it should take about five minutes to write this almost six gig file. Not too bad. So that is definitely a benefit. There are options and Rufus that you can use, but most of the options that you can use are in the drop downs where the advanced drive properties and the advanced format options are down here. And you would use these in other cases or 
particular specific Linux installations, you can use those and other types of images. But this actually might go quicker. Because it's already at 10% and we haven't really been going that long. Uh, most of the images that I've been writing have been taking about five minutes. Your mileage may vary, of course, because your bus controller may be faster than mine or slower, depending on what, how you're writing it, what adapters you're using for your micro SD card, and, of course, the speed of your computer and whatnot. But it will eventually finish. Just make sure that your SD card is as big or bigger than the image you're trying to write to it. Otherwise, you're going to have some problems. At 21% already. As you can see, if there was doing anything odd, it would tell us in here if there was an error or write error or anything of that nature. And these give us settings, more information about the application, change the language. And we can see the log file here. Move that back over. So it tells us what we're doing, which I actually appreciate because sometimes if you are having an issue, it's good to have a very comprehensive log file to see what exactly it is you are doing. This tells us our Windows version, the SysLinux version that it can write to various things that are important sometimes when you're diagnosing a problem. It said it found my SD card. No volume information because I've been formatting it between episodes in advance so that it's blank and there's no issues with it already having data on it that might cause confusion or double up the image. So. And that's why you're getting this message about it has a zeroed MBR, checks for updates, and there we go. So this having a log file is invaluable sometimes in tracking down issues. I look at it this way, and this is how I actually stumbled onto Rufus, was that I was having trouble writing an image with Etcher, and I looked for an alternative, and this is what I found. And based on this, I could run it, see the log file, see why it was failing, and a lot of detailed information about what was going on, and then realized that the SD card that I was using actually was defective, and then I had to buy a new one. So, bad news, but better news than me spending hours trying to troubleshoot a problem that I was never going to get past. And we're already at 60%. And of course, obviously, the green bar works its way across the screen as it goes. I just want to show you what it looks like when it ends. So I think that's kind of important so that you can see a successful write and what it appears like, what it appears like, and how things look when they're working correctly. And if you're curious, after this, we're going to start on. I'm going to try to get my Mac to write one, and we'll see how that works out. But my Mac is old and decrepit and doesn't really work very well. So we'll see if it will even read in a micro SD card. We might have to do that one later, but I'm just not in the mood to buy another Mac right now, so that may have to wait. If that's the case, then we'll start installing operating systems because we actually have 14 to install, so that would be a good variety of operating systems to run on the Raspberry Pi. And one of them should tickle your fancy and make you happy and give you the ultimate in productivity. And that's a complete overstatement. I don't think a Raspberry Pi could be considered the ultimate in productivity. Although a good boost to productivity would be nice. And almost done. I'd say that took about five minutes, so not too shabby, right in line performance-wise with the other ones. So we're not gaining or losing anything by choosing one program over another for duration of how long it takes to write the SD card. But like I said, this one is my favorite to 
to write image and ISO files and whatnot. Because if it is going to have a problem, it will tell you what you can do to solve it before it starts writing it most times. Uh, I know in certain Linux images you try to write, it will tell you that you need a particular version of SysLinux, and it will try to find it for you. And that's, that's pretty awesome. I like programs that are intuitive enough to try to help me out when I don't bother to read directions. And there we go. And this was what a successful write looks like. It gave a system noise and brings us back so that we have the availability to click start or close. And of course we're going to get close because we're done and eject the drive properly before we remove it from the machine. Now, if you're watching this video coming from one of my other Raspberry Pi installation videos, since I bundled these all up, I only had to do them one time and I can just link to them. Then you can return to that video and continue on, and that will get you everything you need to know once you get started. So if you're doing this step by step, you've probably got that video paused and this one open in another window. And now you can go back and continue with your OS install because you should have your operating system burned to your SD card. So go ahead and insert it in your Raspberry Pi, fire up that other video, and carry on. And good luck to you. But that's it for writing an image file with Rufus. Pretty simple, pretty painless. Not really that big of a deal. Thanks for watching.